31 percent. Come on. Well, Miss Smarty Pants, do you remember anything about probability, or did you just pull that out of thin air? Oh, are you accusing me of something, you two-faced frog face? What did you just say? That's right, you green mushroom. Cook it alive. I hate you. I hate you. need a wand. They're all different types of fairies. Why don't you go bark up another tree? We don't even know who you are. Well, I can solve all your problems. Oh yeah, right. Well, let me take you on a journey of what I like to call chapter six. You need to know a couple of terms before you go on this journey. The first is random. Random is when individual outcomes are uncertain, but in the long run, there is an event pattern. The next term is probability. Probability is when long-term relative frequencies and the proportion of desired outcomes in the long-run experiment occur. The next term is independent. Wait! Independent You're is going too fast! Oh, that shouldn't come from someone who's going to say, I'm going to get a five on the AP exam, Pilar. God. Okay, let's continue. Independent is when independent events are, well, they do not affect one another. And a probability model, which is another term, is either a list of possible outcomes or an assigned probability of each outcome. Dependent events are events that do not influence each other. And the last term is sample space, which is a set of all possible outcomes. So, did you get all the terms? Yes. Excellent. Now there are two rules of probability that you will need to know. The first rule is when the probability of an event A satisfies 0 less than or equal to the probability of A less than or equal to 1, which basically means all probabilities are between 0 and 1. The second rule is the sum of the outcomes of every probability must add up to 1. Is there anything else we need to know? Well, there are a couple of formulas that you'll need to know. The first one is the multiplication rule of independent of independence, which is when A and B are independent if and only if the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. The second is when the chances of A occurring given B already happened, the probability of A divided by B minus the probability of A given B. So given that B has already happened, what are the chances of A occurring? Well, an example is if I pull out a jack in a deck of cards, that, given that I've already drawn a king, it's the same as if the probability of a jack over a king, the probability of a king. The third formula is the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability A and B. The fourth probability formula is the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B divided by A. And you use the third and the fourth rule when A and B are dependent. Wow, that's a lot to remember. Well, you better start learning them. AP statistics test. I can't even say it half the time. What about calculus? Man, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I am the magical unicorn who has the answer to all your problems. I have devised a special test that will test your abilities in statistics, Princess Pilar. And if you pass this test, you will win this magical potion that will help you get a five on the AP statistics test. So how do I get to take this potion? Come with me. Consider the following word, statistics. What is the sample space? Well, we have an S, a T, an A, an I, and a C. We don't repeat, and I think that's how we solve the sample space. Since the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. Next question. So Z are the letters in, sec in the second half of the alphabet, which are M through Z and y are consonants. The probability of z is st. 
since those are in the second half of the alphabet. And the probability of Y are C, S, T. The probability of Z or Y is C, S, T again. And the probability of Z complement C is C, A, I. Next question. Create a probability model in terms of the sample space you created in A. So our probability model is either a list of possible outcomes or an assigned probability for each outcome. So our possible outcomes are S, T, A, I, and C. And the probability that we have in S is 3 tenths, since there are 3 out of the 10 letters. For T, it's also 3 tenths. For A, it is 1 tenth. For I, it's 2 tenths. And for C, it's also 1 tenth. And we can make sure by adding them all together, if we get 10 over 10, we have 1, and that's what the probability equals. So 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 1, 7, plus 2 is 9, and then plus 1 is 10. So we have 10 out of 10. Then our next question is, create a Venn diagram with a problem. So we would have Z for this side, and Y for this side. And then anything that Z is the letters in the second half of the alphabet. And then S and T would be that, but they also fall in for the probability of Z or Y. So that would be S and T in the middle. C for category Y. And then A and I on the outside. The next question. Is this independent or dependent and why? So it is it is not independent. It is dependent. So no, it is not independent. because S and T fall under both categories because S and T share the categories. Okay. 